Leica Mobile Sim. Visit leicamobile.co.uk today. Terms and conditions apply. Leica Mobile. Call the world for less. Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, Ibrahim Bin Sori. Striking figures of black history will once again take central place in schools, art exhibitions and play theatres in celebration of their fight against racism. But if we backtrack 1400 years, how did Islam fight racism and in what is an increasingly multicultural society? Is Black History Month still relevant? Stay tuned to find out. Thank you again for tuning in to another exciting show on Women's AM. This is the show where we bring to you new and fresh perspectives, discussion, banter and more. And as always, we are joined by our wonderful panellists, Sister Nazia, Sister Liz and our special guest today, Sister Sakina Yaqub. Assalamu alaikum, sisters. Alaikum Yeah, how are you all doing this morning? Alhamdulillah, yes, good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So I've got a bit of a banter question for you, sisters, and it's one that you're going to have to think about seriously, okay? If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Just the one. <laughs> Just the one, yeah. <laughs> I'm so greedy. I think for me, it would have to be the power to freeze time so that I could have a bit more of a lay-in, have more time to get things done, get the housework done. You know, maybe drink a whole cup of tea before it gets cold, that sort of thing. <laughs> what about you, Sister Nelson? I was thinking about this, actually, and I thought the most useful thing would be if I could fly. I am yeah. always running out of time, and I feel I have to just <coughs> be everywhere at all the wrong times, and the way to deal with it would be, actually, I think it would raise my efficiency levels <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> what about you, Sister Sakina? I think invisibility. If I could be invisible and move around as well, I think that would be really helpful be for me one. and other people as well. Um, I think if it, were, if, it, if it were up to me, I'd say super strength because I'm sort of like the man of the house. So I need that strength to get the DIY and stuff done. So that would be, that would be my one. Jazakallah khair, sister. So uh, before we go to a break, uh, we're going to have to go to a News Bites. So, sisters, what articles have you come across today? I believe uh, Sister and uh, Liz has one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this story is actually from The Independent, um, and the headline reads out, Greek Roma mystery, accused couples say blonde angel was given willingly by her mother. Now, this is obviously covering the story of the, the little blonde girl that was found with the, the two um, gypsies um, in um, Greece. Um, we've now um, been told in the papers that it's been confirmed she's not related to this couple and they have actually been accused with um, uh, charged with abduction um, so obviously you know really sad story we don't know who this this little girl is we don't know how she came to be with them um, obviously a bit worrying that nobody's kind of coming forward and saying yeah. you know I know something or I know who she is um, so it's just very sad and it, it kind of as well brings to light the um, how these kind of stories are increasing. You're hearing a lot of child yeah, abduction cases it's, it's, recently. It's quite surprising. I think the, the police have said that about 20,000 people have come forward um, saying that it might be their child or it might be uh, you know, the child of their own abducted child. So it's, it's quite a shocking story. Very sad. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Sister Nazi, I believe you've got one for us this morning. Uh, I do. It's taken from The Guardian. Um, UK supermarkets face mounting pressures to cut food waste. So essentially, green campaigners um, are urging supermarkets to um, end the multi-buy deal and actually to go a step further and do more about the whole issue of wastage of food. Because this is coming at the back of uh, Monday, there was an announcement from one of the leading supermarkets who mm -hmm. said that they're going to actually stop doing those buy one, get one free kind of deals that they do with these um, products, particularly like with the vegetables and, and things like that. And what the campaign is saying that, look, these are just baby steps. You need to do more than that because at the heart of it, you're dealing with um, a capitalist business system where profit is given the priority. So what they're saying is that, look, in the long run, you need to cut back on the bulk ordering. You need to be less picky about the fact that the products need to look immaculate. And all of these things, what it's actually leading to is wastage of yeah, perfectly I mean, good food. I mean, I absolutely agree because I'm one of those people who end up throwing some, some vegetables yeah. out because I've just bought too much. I mean, Sister Sakina, what, what do you think about this? 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm a mum, and what happens is that you end up buying thinking, oh, you know, it will get eaten. But because of the, the incentive to buy one and get one free, you think, yeah. OK, I'll, I'll, I'll buy the, the extra bag. But sometimes it, it just doesn't get eaten. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a big, big waste. Yeah. It does. It kind of buys into our um, desire to yeah. save money and that kind <laughs> of thing, doesn't it? Yeah. And in the long run, we're not saving right. money and we are just waste, wasting all this food. And it it's is. terrible, really. I mean, it the is. number of times I've had to fight to say, I don't want the deal. And yeah. you go to the till and you're saying to them, to but I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't take no for an answer. Yeah. So. Uh, Liz, I think you've got another one first. Yes, I do. This is um, another story from The Independent, actually. Uh, the headline reads, Elderly Neglect case people can just get isolated through the process of getting old um, and it's you know it's really sad about um, it's highlighting <clears throat> excuse me, the problem of um, elderly people, if they don't have children, if they don't have families, how they can be very isolated. They don't have any connection with um, almost like the outside world, really. Um, and this is the story uh, of Sean Adamson, who um, actually decided to, to visit um, an elderly lady who's in her 80s. Um, and she's in this situation. She lost her husband, no children, and, it, you know, just very, very lonely. And, it, you know, it's very depressing and very, as it says in the headline, yeah. very isolating. Absolutely. Um, and we can see in the story it's actually nice because it shows that it's enriched both of their lives but it it does also highlight a failing in our society whereby we're not there aren't the systems in place to look after the elderly yeah mm. I mean it's such a shame I notice even where I live you see a lot of elderly people who are on their own sometimes even struggling with their shopping yeah. and it really saddens yeah. me and I think you know why isn't there anyone helping them why do they not perhaps have family around them to yeah. help them a little bit more. It is really, really I think sad. It's a reflection of society as well. And maybe sometimes I look at it as like a shift away from the family values because in this particular case as well, it's a really sad story because this lady, you know, her husband passed away and they didn't have any children. But we're seeing this uh, within society where it is an aging population and where you have people that don't have um, family then you have this scenario, but then yeah. you have extreme stories where there was another article where they're talking about very vulnerable elderly people are being taken advantage of by their own relatives. Yeah, um, I mean, it is. It's a very sad scenario because we've become a, very individualistic that yeah. we tend to forget about the people around us. I mean, Sister mm. Sakina, what's, what's your view on this? I think that it's important for, as neighbours, to, to, to ask how, how are you doing, what's going on, so that at least the neighbour would know if someone wasn't feeling well it might be an, an elderly person or, or, or a younger person, but I think it's really important to, as neighbours, know what's happening in your neighbourhood. I think yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, and in Islam, we, we're, we're encouraged to look after our neighbours. They have rights over us, 40 houses to the left and, 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 and to the right. So if we could just do, do our bit, I think it would go a long way. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, absolutely. We do have that responsibility and, you know, every one of us uh, should take the onus, really. We yeah. shouldn't really sort of think, oh, someone else would no. do it. Yeah, this is it. Sometimes we do have that mentality, yeah. don't we? Like, yeah. oh, I don't have to bother because mm -hmm. someone else will pick up the slack. But, yeah. you know, it's the other thing you're saying about our responsibility as Muslims and we should kind of be hungry for that reward yeah. as well, isn't it? I've got one few sisters that I think every single one of us would kind of relate to. This one's from The Guardian. It reads, do stay at home, mothers upset you. You may be a motherist. Oh. <laughs> so this article is sort of talking about the prejudices that mothers face. You know, often people, you know, getting really irritated by women with buggies, getting on the bus and traveling around and thinking, you know, why do you need such a big buggy? Or mothers who, you know, co you know, convene at, uh, you know, local coffee shops, you know, to meet up and, you know, even, co uh, sh you know, like, uh, the coffee shop owners are saying like oh, what do these women do all day and to the point where people are saying like oh you know I wish I had the time to just sit in a in a in a coffee shop oh. and just have a coffee and it's it's really surprising that people have such a horrible view towards it's a horrendous stereotype yeah though, isn't absolutely it? And also devaluing of actually what a mother is yeah I mean you know we were laughing at this because some of the categories that were coming up in the article is just ridiculous you know you say playground fighting amongst kids this is happening with the mums when they sit there asking oh so do you work? Oh, no, I don't work. Mm. And it's the kind of like, you can see the kind of thought process that's going in people's minds. But that's the perception that if you're not working, yeah. then that's really bad. And I think the article says that if you are working. Yeah. How are you finding it, Sister Sakina? Because you're a new mum, isn't it? I am. Um, I mean, I have been working, but basically what I feel is that um, it's a bit of jealousy, actually. I think that yeah. because people have that time, others are thinking, oh, but why do they have that time? Yeah. I should have that time off, too. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, everything balances out. I just feel like, you know, if, if you are a, a stay-at-home mum, it means that you have the opportunity to do things. And, you know, it's not all about just sitting down, but I think you should 
balance it out and, yeah. and enjoy yourself at the Definitely. same time. Yeah, I think they don't realise that, that being you know, a mum is a very, very hard job. Demanding. It's like 24-7. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's yeah, not, it's not just about yeah. sitting in a coffee shop and <laughs> just enjoying yourself all day. I mean, oh. it's really hard work. Yeah. It's like if you, exactly, you adult need to have that conversation. adult conversation. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> and have that coffee because you need Absolutely. the boost, definitely, because you probably didn't have much sleep the night before. Absolutely. And you pick up tips from each other on, you know, issues you, you, you may have at home. So, you know, it's, it's all a very in, important aspect of being a mother, I, of, being, of being a human being, really. You, you need to in, interact and just know that, you know, you're not alone. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, they can feed true. off of each other and, you know, get yeah. ideas. And the thing we were saying things. earlier was it seems yeah. from this article that you can't win. If you're a stay-at-home mother, you're lazy. If you if you work full-time, you're neglecting your children. Absolutely. <laughs> so you can't win. Yeah. Sister, Sister Nazi, I think you've got our final article for the day. Um, I do. It's taken from Mail Online and the headlines say, Teacher, Camera, Action. School starts shaming mums who park badly at school gates by publishing their pictures. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So this particular school has taken an action um, where there was a particular parent who was repeatedly seen to be parking in all the wrong places like the zigzags double yellow lines and and in some cases it was quite dangerous as well because it actually put the children at risk yeah. uh, danger um, and so what they did was in their newsletter newsletter they took a picture of a vehicle <laughs> it's a name oh, and shame scenario wow. and it was and I could see you know at the end of the day it is probably the I, I mean School runs are the most horrendous. I mean, no doubt it is so chaotic. There's nev there never seems to be any parking, yeah. uh, anything like that. And for the school to have taken this kind of action, I mean, it's, it just shows you the problems yeah. that, are, yeah. that how, exist how within this whole, yeah. That's why Nazi wants to fly, so she yeah. can go with that. Because you can avoid the parking <laughs> exactly. situation. Exactly. But I mean, when I read that article, I thought, maybe it's just another form of motherism. Why can't they, uh, you know, kind of, accommodate the parking just a little bit because they know everyone at this particular time are on a school run. Isn't there some sort of way around it perhaps? I, the thing is my problem is <clears throat> the, the mothers that get all their kids in the car to drive them five minutes around the corner, you know. Yeah. <laughs> there is that. There, there is, is that. That. <laughs> I was going to say, sometimes you can have the school within a sort of a built environment, like around estates and houses. I think the issue is, you're right, if those parents who were walkable distance did that, yeah. it would free up the space, because the reality yeah. is there isn't enough space. Yeah. Uh, it's just a second, and what's your experience as a teacher? <laughs> um, I was just going to go back to the, to the issue of of the newsletter, I think that's quite an interesting thing because once the children notice that, it will open their their eyes to realise that you know, mum should be more or dad should be more careful in in how they're parking. And if yeah. they are parking on the zigzag line, which they shouldn't be at a certain time, hopefully the, the children will point, out, oh mum, no, you, sh you you shouldn't really stop here, you know. So um, I think it's a very good idea to be honest with you because I think yeah. it will help the children be more aware and the, and the parents as well. But it's, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh well, Jazakallah khair sisters, those are really, really interesting articles. Um, before we move to a break, we have a poll question for our sisters watching. This week we ask you, is it hard to hold on to our Muslim values living in a Western society? All you have to do is go onto our website www.islamchannel.tv forward slash programs and cast your vote. We will reveal the poll results on Thursday so let others know about it and get your opinion in. See you in a few minutes when we delve straight into our main discussion in Her Views where we'll be discussing Black History Month and its relevance in today's society. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.